Welcome to Project 13 and in today's lesson we're going to go over R value, how to calculate how much R value you have in uh, your walls, your your floors, or your ceiling. It all works the same. But if you were to go into a home improvement store and you go get some insulation, you're going to see a big, in big bold letters, R13, R30, R40, five or something to that nature. What that means, R value, is the thermal resistance that a material has. Okay? And the higher the number, the more resistance that material has to thermal change. The lower the number, the less resistance it has. Okay, so if you want to keep your house cool of the summertime and good and warm in the winter time you gotta have really good good insulation and good R value. Now depending on what part of the country you live and uh, there is a uh, chart in uh, in your book that shows the different zones but uh, to, to be within code you have to meet what the zone that you're in and that will be the following chapter we're going to get into after this one but for now we'll show you how to figure out your R value and uh, I want you to go to page 107 in your book page 107 and go to table 5.3 and it has a lot of commonly used building uh, materials and their p-values now what a p-value is is the material it shows you how much R value there is per one inch of that material. It's basically what p-value is. So, for instance, you have a material that's p-value is one, and the material is, let's say, five inches thick. Well, that material's R value would be five, because it's five inches thick, thick times one because for one inch that had one R value so now it's five inches thick you just take that five times it by one and you get five that's all you do that's the difference between P value and R value so with that in mind let's go ahead and look at this now this is a brick veneer wall this is the brick it's just in an elevation form Here's a two inch airspace, and it says right here we got a half inch wall board on this side. We have fiberglass bat insulation between the wall studs, and it's a two by four wall, which is going to be three and a half inch thick wall. And then you got a three eighths inch gypsum board finish on the inside. Now that 3 8 inch gypsum board, that's what we commonly refer to as sheetrock. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and figure up some numbers. First thing that you need and you'll always do if you're trying to figure R value is that always on each side, exterior and interior, you've got what's called surface resistance. There's a thin, invisible layer of air that floats around that wall. You'll have one on the inside and one on the outside. It acts like a shield and it does have value far as resisting change in air temperature. Okay, The inside is estimated to be 0.7. Uh, R value of 0.7, that invisible little line of air, that wall of air is 0.7 the exterior is 0.2. They normally just round it up and say it's one of every wall or every material has that resistance of one because of that air. As far as like a wall, a floor, or the ceiling. So, but I want to just keep this thing accurate and I want to come over here and so we know the inside's 0.7 and the outside's 0.2. Add those up, you get 0.9. Next thing I want to do is look at my my brick and it's clay brick. 
again you can find that and uh, it is 0.2 and I'm finding that in my little charts in your book on page 107.2 all I do is grab me a calculator up clear it out and 5 eighths is 0 0.625 so it'll be 3.625 and I want to times it by that P value which was 0.2 and the R value of that brick is 0.725 probably thought it'd be more didn't you okay next thing I want to look at is this air gap now we've got a two inch air gap and you'll notice inside of your chart that you have air in there it says uh, it's 5.6 but we can't calculate that in this little air gap now there is a common rule of thumb to figure, figuring our value for a wall like this. Now, air is the best insulator. That's why that your insulation, your fiberglass, that's why it's such a good insulator is because air trapped inside of it, it doesn't move. Okay, it's static. It stays right there. And that air is the best insulator. That's why when you look at that brick, you think, well, that brick is real thick and solid. It should be awesome at resisting thermal change, but it's not because it doesn't have trapped air inside of it, as does like your insulation, your foam boards, things like that. You just don't have that trapped air in, uh, in things like brick or concrete, so you don't have it as good as the R value. But again, we get back to this, this 2-inch air gap rule of thumb is it has to be the air gap has to be at least three quarters of an inch and if it is three quarters of an inch uh, you can consider that you have an R value of one and it doesn't matter if you spread this thing out five or six inches air gap it will have just an R value of one so I want to come over here now and My air gap, I want to put one and uh, jump back up here and get my plywood next. My plywood is one half of an inch and look at my chart. It's under soft woods and plywood's 0.9. So we're just going to take our plywood, that's a half of an inch, 0.5 and times it by 0. 9 and then we're going to equal 0.45 on that one. Okay. Now here's where your R value is going to really grow is this fiber glass insulation. And you look up here it's a bad insulation and this right here is the symbol for it in the section view. And we're using two by fours, which is three and a half inch actual size, and the fiberglass is in there. And let's look that up. Fiberglass, bat, or blanket insulation is I got an R value or a P value of three point five, so three point five times three point five, which is our stud wall, is going to be twelve point two five, and that's just about right because that is what is the minimum in this area for for walls is uh is R13 so this that's just that's about right 12.25 and I'll go ahead and I'll I'll put that in there exactly twelve point two five exactly like it is and we'll round everything up at the end if we have to and next thing I'm going to look at is gypsum board and it's three-eighths of an inch and, it, and gypsum board again is is just our old sheet rock we look at it in our book or chart it's a point six oh so again take your calculator point six oh and times it by the thickness which would be point three seven five is the decimal form for three-eighths you get point two two five. Okay, and that is our entire wall. So let's figure this thing up real quick. 
zero point nine plus zero point seven two five plus zero point four five plus one plus twelve point two five plus zero point two two five equals twenty three point sixty five and twenty three point six point six five it's close enough to twenty four and uh, 